Welcome to Coates' webinar, Inspiring Automation Solutions. Your moderator today will be Roland Wagner. Hello and welcome to this webinar. You know Coates as the IEC 61131 programming tool and you know that Coates is supplying a lot of different field bus systems and the next half an hour we'll discuss the Ethernet IP integration inside Coates. A short introduction. The agenda will be showing you at first some general information on Ethernet IP, then we will take a closer look to the Ethernet IP solutions uh, provided in Coates, and then we will conclude the benefits in the end. So let's start with the general information. I think this is a slide you will probably know very well. It's coming from the ODVA, the user organization behind Ethernet IP, and it shows you that Ethernet IP is using the SIP protocol, the common industrial protocol, which is above the TCP UDP layer of Ethernet. So all these layers here is the common industrial protocol, starting from the session layer to the application layer. And the same protocol is as well used for device net and other field bus systems. Some technical characteristics on Ethernet IP, it's of course an Ethernet based field bus and it's using the transport protocols TCP and UDP, whereas TCP is a slower standard for used for services and UDP is the faster protocol for IO data we will using for the real time IO exchange. And there's a, one more thing you should know. Ethernet IP supports multicast, which reduces the traffic of the producers. And to explain that a little bit more in detail, we have a small graphics here. The producer, typically an, a client or an adapter, when he has an I.O. message and he has different consumers for that message, he would need to produce that message several times. This means a certain load on the producer. With multicast, we can reduce that load where the producer sends the message only to the router and the router itself reproduces these messages to every consumer. So this means that the producer, the adapter, is relieved from the load of the traffic. Some terms on Ethernet IP. So in case you are used with codes, we often speak about master. In the Ethernet IP world, this is the scanner or the originator, whereas the slaves are the adapters in Ethernet IP or the targets. Then there is the so-called requested package interval. This is the interval for sending out or receiving I.O. data. We will need to configure that later on. Then when we are talking about outputs, this is called originator to target, the consume uh, the consumption of that output and the other way around, target to originator is the input. And then there is an acyclic, acyclic service which is called forward open, which is necessary for every new connection so that the data exchange can be started. This is as well used after re-established connection. Some words about the general world's market distribution, you see that Ethernet IP has a, a real huge distribution, especially in the US of course, but it's as well becoming more and more interesting in Europe and in, in Asia and every parts of the world where the automation is relevant. Of course it's used in almost every application, machine control and process control might be the most popular of those applications. Now, after this short introduction, let's come to Coates' Ethernet IP. If you are working with Coates for a longer time, you know that Coates already supports Ethernet IP, but uh, with the recent version, there is an um, Ethernet IP scanner stack available as a pure software solution. So this means that this is a Coates' library which can now be directly integrated in the Coates' project tree. And before I show you all the slides, we will rather switch to Coates' and see how this really looks like. So 
We are now live in Codesys and I have prepared a small project which does not compare anything. You see I have here a PLC PRG which is empty. I have here a library manager. The only thing I have prepared right now is a visualization because we will need it later on. And in order to implement an Ethernet IP scanner, we need of course to add a device in the project tree, in the device tree. Now you see that there is only there's already an Ethernet IP controller available, but if you click on that, we'll see that this is the old solution using a special interface card, a Hilcher card with a CIFX or a special NetX communication chip on board. So this was a solution with a dedicated hardware, and in this case we do not want that, but we want to use a standard Ethernet port. So I go to the Ethernet adapter, I include that Ethernet adapter into my device tree and then as soon as I click on it I can now choose which feed bus I want to establish on that Ethernet port and there I choose now my software Ethernet IP scanner. Now you see down here that there was a new library automatically included, it's the IO driver Ethernet IP which means now the protocol stack was immediately included by including the scanner here in my device tree. Now clicking on the scanner, I have now the possibility to include Ethernet IP remote adapters and you see I have a list of several such adapters installed on the device repository on my codes and I will choose this Wago device and I could choose another one which I have not here but nevertheless I will just include it. And so I've done the first configuration, so my device tree has these two adapters beyond the Ethernet IP scanner. Now of course I need to configure the scanner and to give him the IP address which I'm physically using for my Ethernet IP connection. In this case I know that this adapter has this IP address 192.168.1.1 There are some more register cards here in that scanner, but in fact this is almost everything you need to configure. There is one option, you can tell the scanner that it should also re-establish connection after there was a connection break. And in case you want to, you have here the complete overview on all the scanner configuration variables which are implicitly available with that stack. Okay, then let's go to the adapter. Of course, I need to tell the configurator which IP address the adapter has for the Vago adapter which I have recently connected here to my soft PLC. I have the address 1.5 and then there are some options for the electronic keying of the adapter so I could for example check whether there is the correct major revision on it, the correct product code. This is helpful in case you want to make sure that after a, a change of the adapter uh, there will be no problem because of that change and because of a, a new revision or a new major product code or something which has changed. Okay, let's come to the second register card. Here I need of course to establish a connection which means I need to establish the inputs and outputs of my adapter, so I add the connection and I could do that with a generic connection but it's much easier coming from the EDS files there are predefined connections already offered so I choose that class 1 exclusive owner and I have several options for, the, for this, I could have for example changed the trigger type cyclic change of state for, with the application I could change the output size, the scanner to target, or the input size, the target to scanner, but in fact this is exactly what I have configured here physically with my adapter. Then I need to configure the requested packet interval. This is important to know that the requested packet interval needs to be a multiple of the bus cycle time, so in my application here of a bus cycle time of the main task with 20 milliseconds, so this means I need at least to have 20 milliseconds, but it could as well be 40, 60, 80, something like that. 
Then we have a timeout multiplier for a kind of watchdog, and we can lead, uh, can take that multicast connection type, or we can as well switch back to point-to-point -point connection in case you want to do that. Okay. So we have uh, added this connection, and this is exactly what I've, I'm, I'm having here. Let's go to the third register card. There we have the possibility to add user parameters. So this adapter offers some user parameters, for example, like a failure reaction. And that could configure that uh, in case of an error, of a failure, all local IOs are stopped, or I switch all outputs to zero, or something like that. Of course, I can change that as well directly here in that tree again, so I don't need to open that dialog once again. Good. Then, once again, we have here a register card showing all implicit variables of the Ethernet IP configuration. So, this is an information for the professionals among you who might have a direct view on every single variable. Much more important for everybody is the Ethernet I.O. mapping. So, we see here all the connections, all the outputs and inputs that we have configured with the connections, and we can now connect them to the variables we want to use in the PLC application. So, I could, for example, switch in here and say, this is x out 1, and you see this symbol here shows us that there was a new variable created, which is now available in my complete application as a global variable. I could do it as well in a different way. I could down, could down to my PLC PRG, to my POU, and have, for example, an x out 2. And uh, connect then my configuration to exactly that variable. So you see that we have now a mapping to an existing variable. And in this case, the address is crossed out. This does not mean there is no address available, but this means that this is now handled by the configuration. So then there is a third possibility how to configure that. XR3 could be directly linked to percent QX0.2, for example, and as a Boolean variable. And so this means, in this case, that the configurator does not know that there is a connection between the address and the variable, but nevertheless, it's connected in here. Okay, now we have configured everything. I check that box always updates variables because there is no application running so far, then we'll be sure we can check that without any code below here. The only thing I need to do is now to connect my device here to the soft build. See, I'm running on my PC. So, this is done with the communication dialog, and now I can log in. So, in order to do so, I switch here the login, or press the login button. So, the whole stack is now compiled and linked to the application. We see that we have an error message here. The bus is not running, so we have a certain diagnosis in here, and we see it as well in the device tree that Ethernet is running with that gray symbol here, but the Ethernet IP scanner is not yet running. This is because we are still in stop mode. So, I start the application, and we see that the scanner is becoming green, and the adapter is as well becoming green. The second adapter is not because I have not connected it to my physical network. So, this is good that it's not becoming green because otherwise this would be a real miracle. <laughs> okay, then we can check whether everything works. I have my adapter here on my desk. And if I manually switch the output, perhaps we make that a little smaller so we can see that here better. If I check my output to true, then I will see that this output is really switched. And we have wired the output as well to the input, so we can exactly see and follow that this is coming in. 
and we see that everything is working fine. Let me do that in the second output two and with the third output two, so everything is running, looks very good. So we have really realized a complete configuration of Ethernet IP within a few minutes. And this is similar to any other field bus system within CODESYS. So let's come back to the presentation. We see that the Ethernet IP software scanner stack really realizes the whole protocol just by the means of our CODESYS library. It supports class one connections, so we have real-time inputs and outputs via UDP, we have a duplicate detection, and we have as well support device diagnosis. We have seen that with that uh, symbols. So we see diagnostic instances for the I.O. driver and for each adapter. One component in the runtime system of the PLC is necessary. It's the SysSocket component, which needs to be implemented, but usually this is realized as soon as you have an Ethernet port on your device. So as I already mentioned, this solution is an alternative to the CODES Ethernet IP with the Hilcher card. Yeah, as I already said before, we already had that solution with Ethernet IP, but in this case with the Hilcher NetX based connection, there was a special dedicated hardware needed which had the stack on that hardware. But this means, of course, that uh, this uh, solution needs more hardware, so this is with higher costs, and you need a special component to address that scanner card. So with the pure software solution, we have it much e easier. We have seen that the Ethernet IP configurator included in CODESYS does the configuration of the device tree, the parameter, target settings, and the I.O. mappings. We've seen the editing of the connections and of the user parameters. So there's one more thing I want to show you in live demonstration. There's a special Ethernet IP services library available. So I switch back and come back to the library manager. This is not included automatically, so this is my task to include it. And it's found beyond application, field bus, and there it's Ethernet IP services. But don't worry, if you don't know where to search for it, there is a very use handy feature right now. You just tip, type in, like in Google, you find that Ethernet IP services library and can easily include it inside your library manager. So let's take a closer look what is included in that library. There's a certain documentation available. There are some enumerations available, for example, the CIP class, and of course, function blocks which you can use in order to access the Ethernet IP. And one thing we will use right now is get attribute single. This is a function block which gives you the access on attributes on the adapter, for example. And in order to make it short, we have prepared that in a special project. You see this is very similar to that I had before. The only thing is that we make an instance of that get attribute single function block out of the Ethernet IP services library. It has a prefix inip, so this is the prefix you have to use in order to be sure that you access that library. And there is a certain configuration. One important thing is that you have to enter the interface and the interface is exactly the name that you have chosen for that Ethernet IP adapter. So in case you change that name here, you should change as well the name in the call. Then we over give some, some parameters, for example, the SIP class, the user interface, some addresses and uh, space for the data. And uh, now we can check that. And I'll, I'll log out in that. The other Project, so I can just log in here. There's an unknown version. Yes, this was the former one. I overwrite that. And then I can see that we're here running that special function block. 
Of course, this is a very handy thing, but it could be even more handier, and this is something I will show you, because we can use the visualization of codes. And there my colleague has already prepared something. We have here a so-called frame included, which is part of the library. I can just show you how to, you could do that. Just include the frame and use, for example, you, you search for get attribute single, double click on it, and then you have that frame inside here. The only thing you need to do is you need to configure this frame with the instance of the function block. And you remember that we have instantiated this function block in here with the name get attribute single. So this is something we just need to type in here. Of course, we could as well use the input assistant, go to the application and reference to this function block instance. Okay, but in this case we have already prepared it, so I don't need that anymore. Just delete it out. I log in once again. And uh, now we can see that this get attribute single function block, as soon as it, as it is enabled, will deliver a certain feedback, and this is in fact the IP address in hex mode of my Ethernet IP adapter. So this was that Ethernet IP service library, which gives you access, a remote access to the adapters and to the network. The scope is you can get attributes, set attributes, apply attributes, start, stop, reset, or just send out no operation. We have the visualization not just for the get attribute, but for all of these services. And this is only applicable for the software scanner. So don't try to use that service library with the Hitcher solution. This is not working. So we're coming to the end. You have already seen how it works. It's very simple. I just want to conclude the benefits. The advantages in relation to the solution with fix in, with an external field bus card is that you have a pure software solution. So you just need a standard Ethernet port, no additional hardware is needed. Then we have a device diagnosis in the background task. We have that end user library for explicit messaging for these acyclic services. And with the Kutsis Ethernet IP scanner stack, we have a software solution, solution that is fully supported by 3S Smart Software Solutions, so not just the configurator, but as well the protocol stack, and the rest you will need is just the Ethernet port on your controller. In case you are an application engineer, this means you don't need to have an additional card. In case you are, for example, a PC-based solution, just take a Ethernet port, a standard Ethernet port. So this means that we have one tool for the integrated infrastructure of PLC programming and field bus configuration. You've seen that it's a very simple configuration with a, just a few sources of errors, and this is coming with a very fast engineering. So then I thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, in case you have questions further on, you can of course send me an email, r.wagner at coaches.com, or you will receive as well a reply email with webinar at coaches.com. So in case you want to receive more information on it, then don't hesitate to contact us. But of course you can do the same thing I did right now. You can just download Coaches with a soft PLC demo, take your Ethernet IP adapter and connect it, and you could immediately check out and make your own experiences with it. Thank you very much, and have a nice afternoon in case you're in Europe, or have a nice morning in case you're abroad. Bye-bye.